Stadium here in Wilson, North Carolina. The Marlins will go 2-3-4 with Trent Youngblood, the shortstop, leading things off. We've got a new man on the mound. It's Rylander Bansick out of Rice University. Urbansic has really been a relief guy all season long for the top. Six games played and has yet to throw more than two innings. We saw two innings thrown on the road against the Tri-City Chili Peppers. Other than that, one inning, one inning, point two, point two. So excited to see how much he's got in store for us tonight. Trent Youngblood at the plate, 0 for 2 so far tonight. Takes that pitch inside, and it's quickly a 2-0 count. And we were talking about it during the break, Joe, but this has been the point in ball games recently for the Tavs where the starter has its best stuff, and then guys come out of the bullpen and maybe walk fast, and, and unfortunately a 3-0 start here. But you see multiple walks in a row, and it gets teams back into ball games. So this is a big spot for Rylander Bansick. You have a, a, a five-run advantage. you gotta you got to pitch your best right now and, and limit the damage and, and keep it right where it is. Here's the 3-0 pitch. And just like that, it's a four-pitch walk to lead things off. Those are two things that have really hurt the Tobs this season, Carter. It's leadoff walks and walks coming from your bullpen. No doubt about it. And, you know, comes out of the bullpen. And it's tough. It, you know, it's tough to throw strikes. But in this case, you know, a five-run lead, just want to barrel down. And Ryland Urbancic is a really good pitcher. Get a ground ball here and turn a double play. So Nate Anderson squares around a bunt. That one goes right past him for a strike. Nate Anderson listed at five foot eight. He is the shortest Marlin on this team. And he is quick on those base paths. He had 23 bases to lead his team at Gardner-Webb this past season. and was fifth in his conference. And that's maybe why you saw him square around a bunt to lead off the A-B. You know, you're not necessarily trying to give up, give up an out there, but if you can push one down the line and reach on a bunt single, that's big time. The 1-1 popped up towards the center field. Makowitz has a beat on it and puts it away for out number one. It's a big first out for Ryland or Bansick. You know, you have the, the leadoff walk, but then... Yeah, induce the fly out, and Scott Makowitz can cover all sorts of room out there in right center. So big put away for out number one. So Nate Anderson moves to 0 for 3 on the day. Now Will Walsh, the first baseman at the plate. First pitch on a fresh count is tipped down into the ankle of Walsh. Walsh, a guy that does a, a little bit of everything over there at Nebraska University. Positional player that can also pitch for him. Had a 2 and one record on the mound this past year with a 6.3 ERA with the Cornhuskers. Ropes this one foul down the left side. When Will Walsh, too, on the flip side, if you're Moorhead City, you're down five, you... You know, you see Shane Rodemaker, who had dominated you, leave the game, only give up three hits. And now you, you see a fresh arm. You're going through the middle of your lineup. You want to take advantage. Here's the 2-0. Urbancic, a breaking ball that got him looking strike three. That is a big-time strike out there for Ryland Urbancic. A beautiful breaking ball. And on an 0-2 pitch, it was a pretty ball that you know, maybe if he commits at the dish, he can put a good swing on it, but I think he just froze him that much and wasn't expecting a slider there to put him away for out number two. A four-pitch leadoff walk to get things started, and then right there, a four-pitch strikeout. Brings up designated hitter, Dan Talkin. First pitch swung through. Talking out of... U Albany previously played his college ball at Rockland Community College. That one swung through. Bansick going back to the heat right there. Talking 0 for 2 on the day, faces an 0-2 count. 
Righty deals, that one upstairs. And you can play here, you know, up one, two in the count. Don't necessarily want to bounce one in the dirt, but with just a runner on first, you can get creative here on a one, two. This one, a grounder, right over to second. Parrish, gloves, flips to one, and Hernandez puts it away for out number three. So Urbanzik starts on a rocky note with a four-pitch walk, but able to clean it up right after that and quickly goes three up, three down. We'll be right back, home half of the sixth inning, coming up after this. And welcome back into Assembly Hall. Joe Brennan alongside Ben Haller. Hoosiers on a hot streak right now, a 7-0 run in the last 55 seconds on an absolute tear. Here are the Hawkeyes with it. Inbound to Sonano on the low block, working on Holmes. Puts it up, no good. Great defense by the Hoosiers. Grace Berger comes up with a rebound, brings it across the timeline, and she'll slow things down for the Hoosiers. Ball poked away, but Berger able to recover. 18 seconds on the shot clock as she hands it off to Moore McNeil, and they set up in their offense. Berger now on the right wing. Back over to Moore McNeil. Swings over to Garzone, but poked away by Clark. Now wide open in transition, gets it to fall. An easy fast break layup. That all started there by great defense by Clark. You don't think Clark wants this one. She's playing with tremendous energy right now. And you talk about her shot making ability, but it's really all around the kind of things Caitlin Clark can do on the defensive end as well. Hoosiers lead by five, 6.30 to go here in this ball game. Berger turns around, fires, and gets it to fall from 16 feet. I think Berger wants it a little bit too. These, three, these two teams met three times over the course of last year. Iowa took all three of them. It's personal to Grace Berger, and it's showing right now. Clark swings to the corner for Warnock. And they're going to call an off-ball foul on Sinano. She tried to cut to the rim, but bulldozed a few Hoosiers on her way down there, and Indiana will take back possession. That's a frustration foul for Sonano. I know it's a stereotype talking about the crowd as a sixth man, but sometimes they can kind of feel like an extra defender. And Sonano forced to take a breather with her fourth personal foul on the night. Hoosiers lead, 71-64. Six minutes to go here in the fourth. Scally on the left wing. Kicks it over to Moore McNeil. Now Holmes on the low block, get and go. Kicks it over, extra pass to Garzon. Gets it on the doorstep. The ball movement of this Indiana team always making the extra pass, the kind of players they have. Hoosiers lead by nine. Caitlin Clark guarded by Moore McNeil, who's been on her like bark on a tree all day long. Warnock, the top of the arc, driving on Garzon. Double comes from Scalia, she gets the steal. Hoosiers have numbers, moving in transition. Scalia swings the burger from long range. Air ball. Warnock comes up with the rebound. Yeah, that's big for Iowa. They need that one to slow the crowd down a little bit, slow the game down. Clark quickly the other way, drives in with the right, gets the bucket to fall, and one. She'll head to the stripe for another. I'm, it's impossible to put Iowa away just because of Caitlin Clark. She will not go quiet. And she's so quick at bringing it from the backcourt to the front court, There just catches the defense sleeping, attacks with the right hand, and just catches the Hoosiers off guard. An easy bucket there. As the Hoosiers see the replay on the screen, the fans are not loving it. Ah, it's not. Clark gets the free throw to fall, converts the questionable and one, and the Hoosiers now lead by six with just under five minutes to go here. Berger on the right baseline, cross court pass to Scalia. Reverses to Berger, top of the key. She's looking down low, but will give it up to Moore McNeil. Garzon wide open in the corner. Bang! Garzon hits it from downtown. And the Hoosiers now back up by nine. A freshman should not be able to make that big of shots. Twice now. On the inside, swings it out to Morton on the right wing. She hits front iron. Berger comes up with the rebound. And the Hoosiers are starting to feel pretty good about this game, Ben. Just over four minutes to play. Indiana with the basketball up by nine. Grace Berger on the left wing. 
takes the screen, drives with the right hand, spins back, goes up with the left, no good. Offensive rebound for the Hoosiers. Foul on the way up is Meister, and she'll head to the line for two. This is a big spot for a freshman, Lily Meister, to be in. Indiana got to keep pounding it inside. That's what's getting him open looks, whether that's up from the three, whether that's a really good post move from Meister or Holmes, but this Indiana team in good shape right now, up nine on the Hawkeyes. Meister did a great job following the shot there, able to get the board and head to the stripe and try and extend this Indiana lead to double digits. We've got four minutes of basketball left, but don't go anywhere. You're listening to the WIUX 99.1, your home for Hoosier Sports. And I know. 